Basketball Games of the Mind As incredible as the evidence culled by the above-mentioned researchers is, it is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the control the holographic mind has over the physical body, and the practical applications of such control are not limited strictly to the matters of health. Numerous studies conducted around the world have shown that imagery also has an enormous effect on physical and athletic performance. In a recent experiment, psychologist Shlomo Bresnitz at Hebrew University, Jerusalem, had several groups of Israeli soldiers march 40 kilometers, about 25 miles, but gave each group different information he had some groups march 30 kilometers and then told them they had another 10 to go. He told others they were going to march 60 kilometers, but in reality only marched them 40. He allowed some to see distance markers and provided no clue to others as to how far they had walked. At the end of the study, Bresnitz found that the stress hormone levels in the soldier's blood always reflected their estimates and not the actual distance they had marched. In other words, their bodies responded not to reality, but to what they were imaging as reality. According to Dr. Charles A. Garfield, a former National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, researcher and current president of the Performance Sciences Institute in Berkeley, California, the Soviets have extensively researched the relationship between imagery and physical performance. In one study, a phalanx of world-class Soviet athletes was divided into four groups. The first group spent 100% of their training time in training. The second spent 75% of their time training and 25% of their time visualizing the exact movements and accomplishments they wanted to achieve in their sport. The third spent 50% of their time training and 50% visualizing. And the fourth spent 25% training and 75% visualizing. Unbelievably, at the 1980 Winter Games in Lake Placid, New York, the fourth group showed the greatest improvement in performance, followed by groups 3, 2, and 1 in that order. Garfield, who has spent hundreds of hours interviewing athletes and sports researchers around the world, says that the Soviets have incorporated sophisticated imagery techniques into many of their athletic programs and that they believe mental images act as precursors in the process of generating neuromuscular impulses. Garfield believes imagery works because movement is recorded holographically in the brain. In his book, peak performance, mental training techniques of the world's greatest athletes, he states, these images are holographic and function primarily at the subliminal level. The holographic imaging mechanism enables you to quickly solve spatial problems such as assembling a complex machine, choreographing a dance routine, or running visual images of plays for your mind. Australian psychologist Alan Richardson has obtained similar results with basketball players. He took three groups of basketball players and tested their ability to make free throws. Then, he instructed the first group to spend 20 minutes a day practicing free throws. He told the second group not to practice and had the third group spend 20 minutes a day visualizing that they were shooting perfect baskets. As might be expected, the group that did nothing showed no improvement. The first group improved 24%, but through the power of imagery alone, the third group improved an astonishing 23%, almost as much as the group that practiced.